So today, folks, we are going to make pasta a la Genovese. This is definitely one of my favorite pastas. I, I love it because I'm not the biggest fan of tomatoes, and this is made with just a little bit of tomato paste, but almost all just onion and beef. Two things that I absolutely love. So let's just get right into it. Let's just get right into it. Just in the pasta, let's get, let's get right into it. The ingredients that we're gonna need for this today are, of course, our beef short rib. I have some nice boneless beef short rib here, uh, about three pounds. And since you want a two to one ratio of beef short rib to onion, I have about six pounds of onions here. I also have a couple carrots, because they're small, a couple stalks of celery. Normally this would be pecorino that you would use in this dish, but I have a few different kinds of cheese that I'd like to use up, so I made a mix of grated pecorino, grana padano, and parmigiano reggiano. I also have 150 grams of pancetta, five ounces of tomato paste, a couple bay leaves, and I'm gonna be using large shells for the pasta today. And then I'm gonna be using about two cups of wine, and that's all we're going to need. Now, when you're preparing this, you wanna get these onions cut very, very small. So I'm going to use a mandolin today. Normally I'd just use a knife, but you want these to break down into a sauce basically, so the thinner you slice them, the better that's going to happen. When you're using a mandolin, of course, be very careful. If you're not comfortable with it, then I suggest you not only use the guard that comes with your mandolin, but also you could use a cut resistant glove. And that way when you're using it, even if you do slip by accident, you won't cut yourself, which is really good. This is everything we need. So I'm going to get started by getting my onions ready. It's by far gonna take the longest time. After that, we're gonna start searing our meat. To get all this stuff ready, first you're gonna start with your onions. Just cut the ends off. Take that first layer off. It's very rubbery and obviously the skin with it. Okay, we have all of our onions cut in half, ready to go. So we are going to start using the mandolin now. Like I said, if, you, uh, if you're if you worried about it, definitely get yourself a cut resistant glove. Um, I don't actually have one, so I'm not gonna be using one. When you're doing this, you just wanna make sure that you're getting your onion through a nice good stroke. You don't wanna be slow or unsure. Get it in there and slice it like that. When you get low, grab the guard thing that comes with it and use that till you get down to something like this. Now I'm gonna save all these till the end and then I'm gonna put them all back in there and I'm gonna do those as well. If you want, you could also do it this way instead. That'll keep your fingers away from the blade longer. Okay, so we have all of our onions ready here. They're all nice and thinly sliced on the mandolin. So I'm just gonna start cutting up the carrot and the celery. And you wanna make sure that you get these really finely diced as well, because you also want those to break down. I already cut the ends off the celery, um, so I'm just going to cut that in half and then cut that in half again. Then I'm just gonna try and get these as thinly sliced as possible. So for the carrots, if you like to peel them, you can peel them. If you don't like to peel them, just make sure you give them a really good wash. Get all that dirt, pesticides, and all that stuff off of there. There is a lot of nutrients in that outer skin. And since I'm making a sauce that's gonna be cooked down a lot, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave those on. If you had a big carrot, you could chop it off right where you know it starts to taper. So you have one size. You can make one edge flat and then just cut pieces like that, then you can cut these pieces into little juliennes and then you can chop those up and you get a really, really fine chop, like so. Now we're just gonna give our pancetta a little bit of a, I know it's diced up already, but I want it a little finer, so I'm just gonna give this a, another chop. And now for the absolute star of the dish and that's gonna be our short rib. You can use any meat, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna slow cook it. Anything is gonna get fall apart tender when you, if you cook it long enough. Um, if you don't wanna use short rib or you can't find it, you can very easily get either a chuck roast or a blade roast, they're both the same thing. You can find those basically in any store or butcher. So I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of that fat. 
I'm just gonna cut them into pieces so that I can sear in the pot a little easier instead of this whole length. Don't get rid of all the fat. You definitely want some of that for flavor, but I just like to clean it up a little bit. And we're just gonna season that with some salt and pepper. Okay, we have our beef all cut up and seasoned. Now I'm gonna start with the pancetta. We're just gonna put the pancetta in like this. There's enough fat and, uh, to render out. Just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this. Basically, we're just gonna cook that enough to get it crispy, render out the fat, and then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna start searing our beef. Okay, so our pancetta is definitely crispy. I don't wanna overcook it too much. It is gonna go back in. So I'm just gonna get this out, drop it all over the floor. Okay, now we're gonna start searing our beef off. We're starting to get a nice good sear. Flip them over. Make sure you get all sides. You wanna sear every side of that meat. It's gonna add so much flavor to the final dish. Also, don't overcrowd your pan, otherwise you're gonna end up just boiling the meat and it's gonna be all gray and disgusting. Okay, so our meat, meat is all seared up, so we're ready to go in with our carrot and celery. Just a little bit of the onion in there as well. Get this started. We'll also put our pancetta back in. We'll just cook that down until everything's softened, and then we'll go in with our wine. Okay, our vegetables have softened down a lot, so we're just going to go in with about two cups of wine. That's about two cups of wine. And we're just gonna let that reduce by half. Make sure we get all that uh, alcohol cooked out and reduce it down, get that water out of there so we're left with that beautiful white wine flavor. Okay, we definitely have reduced this by half, maybe even a little bit more. I'm just gonna add the tomato paste, cook that for a little bit. Now, normally this dish is not cooked with any tomato or tomato paste at all, but I do add a little tomato paste because I do find it gives it a little more body and depth of flavor. Um, I'm also gonna add the bay leaf in there. We'll just get that stirred up. And we don't really need to cook the tomato paste for very long. So at this point is when I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. Not too much salt. I don't want it to reduce and become too salty. So if there's not enough, we can adjust it at the end when it's finished. I think we're definitely ready to add our meat back in. And then we're gonna add the rest of the onions. Now before I turn this right down to low and uh, let it go. I'm just gonna put the lid on it for a few minutes. In a few minutes, I'm gonna try and stir it up a little bit. And I'm gonna keep doing that until, until the onions have come down a little bit and we can get things mixed up. And then uh, we'll crank it down and let it cook. I'm starting to get some juices built up down here from these onions. So I'm just gonna put the lid on, turn this down to low, set a timer for two hours. I'll probably check it maybe in about an hour just to make sure that everything's good. And then uh, another hour after that, and then we'll probably be ready to take the lid off and let it start reducing. So I'll see you in a couple hours. Two hours later. Our uh, pasta sauce has been on for a couple hours now, so we're just gonna check it. Oh yeah. So those onions have broken down lots. We got a lot of liquids forming now, so we're just gonna take the lid off. We're gonna leave it off so this can continue to reduce as far as the liquid goes and become a nice thick sauce that will then turn into a pasta dish. Couple more hours probably and uh, we'll see you again. Two hours later. Okay, so we, uh, we've been cooking for another two hours and we're ready to take the meat out and shred that up. I'm gonna keep letting that reduce a little while I do that. And then I've also got some water on with some salt for the pasta. Let's get the meat out of here and get it all shredded up. All right, so I uh, also, while I'm here getting the meat, I'm just gonna get the, uh, the bay leaf out if I come across it. If not, it's a big surprise for the person eating it. Uh, I'm just gonna use two forks. They're, they make these like um, um, Wolverine claw things you can get too. I don't have those yet though. But this should just pull apart real easy like this. Like it's just falling apart, no problem. All right, so we are all shredded up and ready to go. So I'm just gonna put this back into our pot. And as you can see, our water's boiling, so I'm gonna get the pasta in there. So these shells take about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. 
So we're gonna cook them probably 10 or 11 minutes and then we're going to finish cooking them in the sauce in the pan from there. Now over here, we're gonna need our cheese blend, some salt and pepper. We're gonna wait till the pan gets hot. We're gonna put a little butter in there. Okay, so we're just gonna get some of this in our pan. If you're wondering about the amount I'm putting in here, it's for two people. We're just gonna cook that down in the frying pan a little bit. <laughs> hey, well, our pasta's cooking. We still got a few more minutes on that. But I'm just gonna get some of this pasta water in here. That's gonna make up most of our sauce. Okay, so our pasta's ready. So I'm just gonna get some shells in there and we'll get a little more pasta water with that. Okay, there's a lot more in here. I just decided to make all of it, all the pasta that I uh, made. So I added some more of the sauce in here and a little bit more butter. Now I'm just gonna add some cheese. Now I'm just gonna turn the heat off. Just let that sauce melt that cheese into there. And the thing I like about shells is you're able to get those, lots of this meat sauce just jam packed in, inside of it. And then we'll just finish that off with a little Parmesan. Yeah, we're just gonna chop up a little parsley to get some color in there. There we go. Pasta alla Genovese. Time to eat.